Mr. Kuflamites on the base 139B with the Mishnah. It says, the Mishnah says, Nason Maima Gabishmar Mishul Shitsulu. You can strain water on Shabbos. You can pour water through um, sediments of wine. Somehow that clarifies the, the water. And you can also strain the wine through the cloths. It's interesting that you're allowed to make it wet, the cloths wet. I guess it's not considered laundry. We're going to see why you're allowed to strain. Straining is, a, is itself a problem. The, the basic reason is because anything that's not necessary to strain because you could have drank it um, before the straining, so then the straining is not effective enough to consider it a malacha. So water that could be drinking, drank rather, with the drunk, with the, um, uh, with whatever is, uh, little things that are in it, is not a problem, could be filtered in Shamas. And the same with wine, as we'll see. Bikvi <clears throat> and end with the uh, Egyptian basket. You're allowed to use that to strain the wine. Yes, there's a discussion about um, how to make coffee on Shabbos. Um, basically, you're pouring water through a strainer that has coffee in it. Well, I can drink the water before. And I can, hot water, let's say. Cliché, I don't know. Um, and I can drink the water after. This could be a proof to having a regular cup of coffee. Could be. I don't know. It's not a halacha share. But uh, if, there, if, the, this, if there is a source for it, then this could be the source. Um, this, the, the, the pieces themselves of the coffee would be mukta. So you'd probably have to set that off, set it up before. Let's say you had this thing set up before. I don't know. <laughs> can pour an egg through a mustard strainer. Now, what you're doing over there is you are um, leaving the yolk with the mustard and it gives it a better color. It's, uh, it's like um, they do to the fish, to the salmon, they add like some uh, better carotene to the, it should look more red or something. Look, Looks white. It's like, what's going on? Okay, Vaisin Anumlin Bishabas, you're allowed to make honey wine. That means you mix the wine with the honey, you're allowed to do that on Shabbos. That's considered a drink, even though maybe it was used also for medicinal purposes. But uh, people would drink it as well. So anything that was uh, healthy people would take, it's not a problem. Rabbi Demer Bishabas, the Kais. On Shabbos, you can make it only in a cup. Yamtiv Balagan, and Yamtiv you can make it in a jug. Bamayad Bachavis, but on Chalamayad you can make it even in a barrel. And Rab Tzadakim or Akolaf it depends how many guests you have. Okay. The Gemara says, Amr Ziri, Nason Adam Yayin Salomayn Tzlulun, Teich Meshemers Peshabas Vinacheshesh. Ziri puts a little emphasis here. He says that. Um, you're allowed to pour clear water or clear wine because you're not being effective when you do the straining. It was clear anyway. But if the water is murky and then you're trying to strain it because you couldn't have drank it before. So now it's a problem because you did straining on Shabbos. You're not allowed to strain. You're not allowed to separate on Shabbos. Mesvi, the Gemara is a question. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says, the father of Rabbi Danasi, a person can stir a barrel of wine. Yena ushmara, the wine together with the sediments. And then he can pour it through a strainer. It's not a problem. Now, what he did was he just made all the wine cloudy and then he strains it. Sounds like a problem. Rabbi Shem Megamil says it's allowed. So Tirgum is Ziri. Ziri explains it because Ziri was the one 
that created this problem. He said, it depends. He explains it, Benegita Shanu. He's talking about between the seasons of the pressing of the grapes, um, when over there, the wine has not yet fermented and it's all cloudy and they drink it when it's cloudy. Now, so therefore, the fact that it has sediment in before, it doesn't mean that you won't drink it then, you'll drink it then as, as well. And so when you strain it, it doesn't matter that you strained it because people are drinking it then earlier as well. I guess after it ferments, then the sediments probably turn bad. Now it's like fresh grape juice, whatever, with like peels or something. So it wasn't a big deal. It's like orange juice with the pulp or without the pulp. So um, people have it uh, together. But, um, but after it's aged, then the sediment would really make a difference. And so therefore, when you um, strain it then, then that's a real malacha. So this straining has a, has a purpose of improving the, the flavor of the water? Is that its purpose? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's the flavor of the wine, but it's the way to eat it. You're removing the bad parts of the, of the wine. So the problem is separating. Okay, now, Masana Sayayan Basujan. Um, you can strain the wine through these cloths. I want you to do it separate, uh, uh, um, make a, dis a distinction in the way you do it in the weekday. In the weekday, you would make a guma, a, um, like you would press in, so the strainer would sink down into the vessel when you would pour the... Um, that way it would hold more liquid as it was straining you would push it down. Um, he says, don't make a guma, don't push it down. You strain it, you have to pour very slowly and you'd pour it through the cloth, but the cloth is straight, not with it, without the guma. Guma could mean a hole or it could mean an indent. It's probably here an indent because a hole would lose the whole straining process. You just pour it through the hole into any straining. Okay, Bekvifa Mitzvah with the basket, Amar Vchia Barashi, Amar Rav, Vavach Niagviya Mi Karkisa Shal Keli Tefach. Not 100% sure what this means. Rashi, it's a little confusing. Rashi's saying that, okay, you're using a basket to strain. Underneath the basket is another vessel that's catching the wine. Don't lift the basket up above the vessel, of the bottom of the vessel, a tefah. Rashi says, oh, because then you're making an oil. Now, if you don't learn like Rashi, then you would just say, make a shine. <laughs> Do it with a shine. So then fine, a shine. Rashi said, telling us that there's another malacha here that, that's coming into play. So how do you get it out? Um, I guess when you take it out, you're not making an oil. That's not a problem. Just when you, when you set it up, don't have, you see, because you, you want the space under the basket because you want that to catch the wine. So according to Rashi, I guess if you put a basket in where there's a space of a tefach underneath the straining basket to the bottom, then you've created an oil, a temporary oil, of course, a uh, small tent, small um, underneath, because you need the space under it. Why are you allowed to cover a pot? Question? Yeah. Just an aside. Uh, when we were learning about making Kiddush on Shabbos, we learned that you hold the cup at least just above the tefach, above the, the table, right. whatever. Just could you remind me what the reason for uh, being above the tefach here? There was, as opposed to here, uh -huh. the wine has to be below the tefach. Yeah, I, I remember uh, said in like, the Rebbe Sagada that you hold it three tefachim high. Remember such a thing? Did anyone uh, say that you hold it three? I think oh. we mentioned this once. But um, I guess we're just saying that you, it's considered holding. 
if it's a tefach above. That's considered holding it. We're trying to hold it. If it's too close, then it's considered like still on the ground or table or whatever. So does that reasoning have anything to do with this? It's, maybe? it's associated because it means that a space, a makam chashev is considered a tefach. That's considered already a space that if there's a tent over it, then it's considered a tent. All right. Thank you. To figure out why you're allowed to cover a pot on Shabbos. It's a temporary tent. You use the space under it. It's more than a tefach. I know you didn't make the mechitzas. The mechitzas were there before. Maybe that's the heter. Maybe because you didn't make the mechitzas. I don't know. Okay. Um, I didn't create any chumrah here. I'm just asking. <laughs> okay. Now it says, I'm a Rav. Rav says, Hi, Perunka. This is a cloth cover. If you cover half a basket, that's fine. Half a barrel, rather. A kula kuba. Oh, it's mamish this thing. You can't cover a whole... Uh, a whole barrel. Can't cover a whole barrel. It's not considered an oil if you cover half of it. I don't know why not. It's so oil on half of it. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Okay, Amar of Papa Lena Hadik Inish Tsinaisa Bakumi the Kuzni the Chavisim from the Mexic Mishmeris. Don't put straw inside the mouth of a jug because that looks like a strainer. We have this issue practically on Shabbos. You have certain um, pitchers that allow the ice to go out and, allow, and hold the ice in. Um, that's separating unless the ice is edible and then it's not a problem. But um, um, anyway, you're over here, if you put a straw inside the top and, you, and it looks like when you pour through it, you're going to be straining. The Beir of Papa, Shafu Shikra Mimana Lamana. What? So you're saying that that kind of a jug that prevents the ice? Yeah, it could be an issue. It could be a shaila. Because you're holding back one part and letting out the part that you want. But it's not that you don't want it. I mean, ice, you, I mean, we all eat ice for that matter. <laughs> Right. We'll see. We'll see in a moment. There could be a uh, could be a reason to allow it. We'll see. Wow. But anyway, it's a it's something that has to be, uh, you know, has to look into. Um, a spoon that that a straining you know a spoon that has slots in it that they use a lot of times for salads. That's an issue because you don't want that that uh, that juice. Um, Rav Papa would pour wine from one keli into another, from one cup to another cup, but he would leave it, all the sediments on the bottom. Amar Ravacha midifti Ravina What about the nitzaitzis? Nitzaitzis sounds like chassidus. What about the, um, the 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 last drops in the cup over there? When you pour that out, that's clearly straining. You're using your your. I I get it. Like the whole cup is fine. You pour it out because it's all the way on the bottom, but the last drops are straining. It's just nitzis, nitzis, they didn't care about the nitzitzis because Rav Papa had, what was he? Shichri, it was beer. Rav Papa had beer. He was, um, I think he made beer. Okay. Nice and bay of He was a brewer, I, I think. But definitely Rav Huna was. I don't remember. You could, uh, you could put um, an egg into this mustard strainer. Why are you allowed to do that? You're separating the white from the yolk. Tony Rabbi Yaakov Karcha, interesting. Rabbi Yaakov Karcha says, we get a last name. <laughs> it's uncommon. Um, he says, Lafisha Ain, it could be, it was bald. That's why he got the name. Lafisha Ain, Ais and Ais, Ala Gavan. You see, it's really eichel mitaych eichel. That's where you. That's where you can look for the heter of Moshe. Um, this is eichel mitaych eichel. Both of them are edible, the white and the yolk. 
you want the white, uh, you want the yolk inside just to give it a color, but it's not really bad from good. They're both good. It's not considered separating. This could be, you know, um, skin on chicken that's edible. Of course it's edible. Um, but uh, maybe not a problem to take off. But skin on fish that has the scales on it could be a problem to take off. You would, that, would, that would be a difference there. I mean, if it's scale, if the fish well, is scale. Let's be taking the good from the bad. I mean, not removing, but just removing. No, but let's say you take the bad from the good. But it's not, it's not considered Eichel, it's not considered Eichel Mitech Pseilas. They're both good. Maybe not. Actually, 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 over here, what are you doing? You're separating the bad from what, from the good. And nevertheless, it was mutter. Anyway, I'm not saying any halachas. I'm just saying that there's, there's a, a svara here to, to allow a little more. Itmar, it was stated, Chardal Shalashamir of Shabbos. Now we're entering into a different malacha here. This is the malacha of, of Lisha, of kneading. If it was kneaded, the, the, the mustard, I guess it was turned into a paste of some sort. So, the next day, you can, I guess it hardens, so you can squish it with a, a utensil, soften it with a utensil, but not with your hand. Your hand would be more, according to this opinion, uh, a hand would be the way you do it during the, during the weekday. And we want you to do it differently. You do it with your hand. That's what you do every day. And they tell you you have to do it differently. You have to do it with the vessel on Shabbos to do it differently. You do it with your hand. And it's like animal food. It's like for donkeys, you don't use your hand to, to squish the mustard. It's exactly the opposite. On Shabbos, you do it with the hand because you want to do it differently. Itmar. Rabbi says that with the hand or with the utensil, you're not allowed to um, squish it on Shabbos. I guess it would go under the category of Lisha again. And Rabbi Yechanan Rabbi Yechanan was sort of like the teacher of Rabbi Lazar, Chavrusa teacher. He says that no, you're allowed to do with your hand or with a there's no, there's no problem here. Your hand or with a utensil. Now, Abaya Varava, this Gemara is like really interesting. Abaya Varava, Dharma Teva, Enalach, Krabiechen. He said, no. Abaya and Rava both said, you can't pass on the Krabiechen on its usher. You're not allowed to use your hand or a utensil. Actually, they didn't say both. They just said, you can't pass on the Krabiechen, and that says both. Um, that's matter both. Come Krabiechen and Beshit Seder, Rabbi Lazar. Krabiechen then changes his mind. In Paskins like Rabbi Lazar, that says that it's Aser. Okay. Come Rabbi Lazar, but should say the Shmuel. Then Rabbi Lazar then and says that it's not really Aser, it's only Aser with a Kali, but you're allowed to squish this mustard with your hand. Abaya Vrava Dami Tarvayo, Allah Krabyechanan. And then Abaya and Rabbi said that Allah is like Rabyechanan. I guess because Rabyechanan held like Rabbi Lazar. And Rabbi Lazar held like Shmuel, and Abayi Rav wanted to pass like Shmuel. That you're allowed to use your hand, you're just not allowed to use a utensil. That's what it sounds like from this Gemara. Eimei da Abaya, this is the stepmother of Abaya. Avdila, she made for Abaya this mustard. I guess she squished it on, uh, on Shabbos. Vlayachal, but Abaya wouldn't need it. The Bissu Dezir Avdila L'Rabchia Barashi Vlayachal. The wife of Zeira, made it for Rav Chia Barashi, I guess, was eating at his teacher's house, Zira, And uh, the wife prepared the students some food. He didn't eat it. I'm Malay. So the wife said, For your teacher, your master, I made it and he eats it and you won't eat it. Amar Rava Barshva. Avikimna Kameda Ravina. I was in front of Ravina. He stirred it, the mustard, 
with the middle part of a tuma, which is shum, like the stein, the tuff, and the shin, interchange. Tuma means shum, which is garlic. The middle part of the garlic is like a, it's like a little um, thing to stir. It has a, like that stem. Ba'achal, and he ate it. The halach is not like any of these things that we're saying. Rather, as it was stated. If there was mustard that was needed before Shabbos, the following day you can squish it with a hand or with a utensil. And you could put honey into it. But if you're going to stir it, like a quick, beat, if you're going to beat it, like a then that has to be done before Shabbos. Shachlayim. Shachlayim is um, uh, a type of uh, vegetable. It's called cress. I think we have available watercress. Shachachon mir of Shabbos. That was pounded from Erev Shabbos. You're allowed to put into this oil and vinegar. It sounds like a salad dressing. And you can put Amita into it. We'll find out what Amita is uh, shortly. But you can't stir it only from before Shabbos. You can put this in, but you can't stir it. They want you to make this differently. What's, I'm not sure what the malacha is that we're, that we're concerned about. Is it considered, um, is it considered um, lush, maybe? Shum shiriskomir of Shabbos. Let's say garlic that was crushed um, Risek is to like, uh, it's like ground from before Shabbos. The following day you can put into it um, beans and grease or other types of beans or maybe um, grits. But you can't pound it. If you're going to pound it, then that has to be done before Shabbos. And you can put amitan into it. We said amitan. What's amitan? My amita. What is amita? Ninya. It's mint. You can put mint into the salad. Amrabaya. Shmamina hai ninya mali latachli. Oh, it's a good recipe. I didn't know. Because here you see that mint is good in the in the, in cress. <laughs> I don't know what Abaya is saying. I don't know what he means. Um, is he just telling me a recipe? It doesn't. That's not what he is. <laughs> I don't know. I think it could be that it has to do with that these things could also be medicinal. And if you would make something in a way that it doesn't taste good, then that's clearly being eaten for medicinal purposes. So if you put something in that it tastes good, then that would be something that people would eat even not for the medicinal purposes because it just tastes good. Then that's then there's no shaila there that you're allowed to eat it. The healthy people eat it. So a question about vitamins. If you're allowed to take vitamins on Shabbos. On one hand, vitamins is medicine, and the person's not even sick. On the other hand, vitamins is things that healthy people take as well. So it's not you don't have to be sick to take a vitamin. There's two opinions there about vitamins. For Eisen Anumlin B'Shabbos, you're allowed to make this Anumlin, which Anumlin, we said, was this honey wine. Taner Rabbanu was taught in a b'raisa, Eisen Anumlin B'Shabbos, Fein Eisen Aluntis. You can make Anumlin, the honey wine, but you can't make Aluntis. Wait, let's see what it is. Ezri Anumlin, Ezri Aluntis, what are these two types of wine? Anumlin, Yayin Udvashu Pilpulin. Anumlin is wine, honey, and spices. Wine, honey, and 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 uh, pepper. Aluntis is yayin v'shemen umayim stulin ba'afarsman. The avdi lebe masuta lemeker. 
Alintus is a different story. Alintus is wine, old wine, water, a farsamine, which is balsam. And it's made for the, uh, when you come out of the bathhouse to cool down. Amar Rav Yasef, Rav Yasef says, Zimna Chada Alis Basar Marukva Labay Bani. I went after Marukva into the bathhouse. Kinafki, when I came out, Asai, he came, Ashkayan Chamra Chad Kosa. He gave me one cup of wine to drink. And I felt chilled. It doesn't say chilled. I felt it. I felt its effect from the hairs of my head to the nails of my feet. If I would have drank another cup, I would be afraid. Maybe I'm going to be losing my merits from the world to come. Um, I guess he would need Chusim to save himself. He shouldn't pass away. It was so so cold. Felt he was gonna. He could have died. <laughs> he didn't want to use up his uh, his his miracle credits. So, <laughs> yeah. But Marukva the Shasi Kol Yaima. One second. But Marukva drank this every time, every day, every time he went to the bathhouse. Shani Marukva the Dashba. No, Marukva was used to it. This happens at Fabrengans. They give you a cup of something. <laughs> Everyone else is drinking it. So, yeah, they're used to it. So it's a different story. Okay. The Mishnah says, Ain Sharon is a chiltis patient. Chiltis is a very strong. Oh, I'm going to make noise because I can hear it. Um, Chilt is a very strong uh, um, vegetable, very sharp, and I think it says it can cause uh, ulcers if you eat it straight, but I think they would soak it and they would drink the juice or drink, drink the, uh, the water. Um, it's discussed in Shulchan Aruch in different places as a Dabr or other thing. Okay. So when you're soaking chiltis, you can't soak it in lukewarm water. Patient is warm water. But you can put it into vinegar as a dip. And then you would eat it as a dip. I think the problem here is that if you take it straight with water, then that's a medicine. But if you put it into chaymets, then you're just eating it with bread, and that would be a regular dip. In shailanis akashinim, you can't soak is kashinim, which we say, we translated as vetch, so some sort of vegetable. For leishafenaisam, and you can't rub them. Here, the problem is that you're removing the you're removing the um, the dirt from it, which is bayre. So whether you're rubbing it or soaking it, aval neisam teicha kvara el teicha kalkala, but you can put it into a sieve or you can put it into a basket and if stuff falls out, that fell out automatically. That wasn't your kavana. You just put it in there to hold, you know, to hold this, uh, it's a bowl. So you put it in there. In kaivrin as a tevin bikvara, you can't put the straw into a strainer. You know what's going to happen. Well, you know, I guess um, because then it's going to fall out um, more. In, it's, maybe it's more intentional over there to get the dirt out. You can't put it on a high place that the wind will hit it. And the chaff will, will flow off, will fly away. That's the Zaira. That's another malacha of winter wind. But you're allowed to use a strainer to take the straw to put it into the trough. And you're just using the strainer because that's probably what you have available as a bowl. And then, and then you can use it. You're not machavin for any, um, any malacha there. You're just using it as a, as a tool to, to move the things, move the straw for the animal food. 
We said that you shouldn't soak the chiltis. What happens if you do? Uh, the English of chiltis was asa fatida or something. So asa fatida. It doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I never saw it in the store. So Tirgama Rav Ada Narsha Kameid Rav Yosef. Rav Ada Narsha said in front of Rav Yosef, Shara is chayv chatas. Oh, if you soak it, chayv chatas. What did you do? If you soak a raw meat in water, you're going to be chayev? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't do anything. El Amar Abaya, Abaya says, This is just a derabanan that you shouldn't soak it. That you shouldn't do things the way you do them on the, on the weekday. I'm not sure what the what the malach is. Is the malacha making medicine? Is the malacha some sort of kneading? Maybe is it straining? Or separating? Maybe it's medicinal. Rashi tells us at the beginning that there's a there's a medicinal issue here. We don't want you to do it the way that you would make medicine. What about soaking it in cold water? The Mishnah said in warm water, you're not allowed to. Sounds like cold water is no problem. Amalei Yasser. Rabbi Yanai says that it's Yasser. Rabbi Yechonan says, But that's not a careful reading of the Mishnah. A careful reading of the Mishnah tells you that it's only Yasser in warm water. Amalei, Rabbi Yanai says, If so, what's the difference between me and you? If you don't accept the way I'm, what I'm telling you, that it's us or also b'tzayinah. We already examined this Mishnah, and we realized that this Mishnah is only an individual opinion. And the Tanya, it was taught in a bray saying, "Shirin es achiltes lebechamen v'le b'tzayin." And the Tana Kama holds that you can't soak it in warm water or in cold water. And Rabbi Yaisi am rebechamen asa b'tzayin in matir. Rabbi Yaisi says that in hot water. It's Asr, it's in Matas. Our mission is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi, but there's another major opinion there, the Tanakama, that holds that it's Asr for both, hot and cold. Lamai Avdila, what is its medicinal purpose? What do you do with it? Liyukra Deliba, I don't know what this means. A heavy heart. That sounds more like an emotional thing. Doesn't sound like, um, but I guess that's the term that we use today, a heavy heart, as an emotional thing. I guess in those days it had a uh, um, physio physiological. Um, somehow that helped the heart, this, this um, liquid from the chiltas. Ravacha by Yosef, Chash Biyukar Deliba, Ravacha by Yosef had this um, sensation of a uh, heavy heart. Asalakami de Marukva came to Marukva, Malay Zil. Shasi tilsa tikli chiltasa betlasi yaim. Go drink three measurements of chiltas in three days. So that means take this take this medicine for three days. Azel ishti chamsha b'shabbos umali shabbos. He drank it on Thursday, Thursday evening, probably Friday evening. Litzafra in the morning, Azal Shal Bey Midrash, he came to the base Medrash. Amrulay, he came to the base Medrash, he asked, Am I allowed to drink it on Shabbos? I was told to drink this medicine for three days because of my Yukra Deliba, the heavy, uh, heavy heart. So um, he asked them, Amrulay, Tana de Bey Rav Ada, Varmula Tana de Bey. Be Mar Baravada, possibly Ravada or Mar Baravada said, You can drink this large measurement and it's not a problem. 
That wasn't my question, if I'm allowed to drink it. Am I allowed to soak it? The preparation of the medicine. Maybe it has the other issue of shirin, which is removing the dirt. Which that was an issue. Maybe that's what it means. My, what's the din? Amalur of Chia Bar Ovin, Bididi Avi of the Chia Bar Ovin says, I had a story with this. Bididi Avi of the Vasa Shalin or Avada Barava, Yasra Vada Barava. Vlai Havi Biade, he didn't know the answer. Asa Sheltila Ravuna, I went to Ravuna, Ravuna must be older. Ravuna is a student of Rav. Vamar Hachi Kamar Rav, and Rav, he said, This is what Rav said. Ravuna said in the name of his teaching. Shaira Bitsaina Naminiach Bahama, you can soak it in cold water. And then you put it in the in the sun afterwards so that you should be able to drink it warm. Now, here's the question. Command the Shari? Is that going according to the opinion that holds that it's permissible to soak it in cold? Which was Shab Yaisi? Or, or is that going according to the Tanakama that holds you're not allowed to soak it in cold? The Kumara says, I feel Amanda Usar. Even according to the Tanakama that holds you're not allowed to soak it in cold. That's only if you didn't drink it in the last two days. This is like antibiotics. Uh, you're not supposed to stop before you finish the, uh, the, the whole thing because it may not get rid of the, the infection or whatever and um, it would make it stronger if it doesn't get rid of it. So, because you started this medicine before Shabbos, you need to continue it. So, it's dangerous if you don't finish it. So, here you have to take it on Shabbos, even though you're really not allowed to soak it. So you, but according to this, you soak it anyway. You soak it and, uh, because of the danger that's involved. Okay. Rav Acha Bar Yosef is leaning on Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, his nephew, the son of his sister, and they're walking. Amalei, Rav Acha Bar Yosef says, "Kimatin lebe Rav Safra Elina." When we get to Rav Safra's house, uh, help me get in. So Kimatu, when they get there, Eile, he goes in. Boy mine, he asks Rav Safra the following question. What about rubbing linen on Shabbos? Apparently linen gets, gets uh, tough and firm. And when you rub it, you soften it up. It's probably more comfortable. Or maybe you're trying to whiten it. When you rub it, it would get white. Like cleaning it. So you're allowed to rub it, this white shirt on Shabbos, are you softening it, which that's, there's no malacha to make it soft, or are you laundering it? And that's us. So Rav Safi responds, I mean, there's no problem. You're just making it soft. Kinafik Asa comes outside, comes, Amale says to his nephew, or rather his nephew probably says to him, my boy, Marmine, <coughs> what was your question? My question was, I asked him, am I allowed to rub a linen shirt on Shabbos? He said, yeah, there's no problem. Why didn't you ask about a, a, a handkerchief? If you allow, or a scarf, a suja could be a scarf. Why didn't you ask about a, a scarf? Suja like me, he says, that wasn't a question. I know the halacha over there already. I already asked Ravuna that question. Upashli already told me the answer about that. What did he tell him? The Gemara doesn't say. But um, on the side of the Gemara, it says, Lisura. Pasha Li Lisura. He told me that it's forbidden. I looked in the Steinzeltz, he says, he told me that it's permitted. He had a different Gersa. He uses it. So when the Gemara is vague like this, you can go either way. So he sell, tells him back, So why didn't you use that as an answer? If he told you over the air, Let's say that it's Asr. I told you there that it's Asr. So then why didn't you have an answer for your shirt? 
that it's Asr. So, over there, on the scarf, I'm more careful for it to be white. That would be if it's also, that's the way we would learn this. So there, on the scarf, I know that I'm making it white. A white scarf. But um, the shirt it doesn't have to be so white. So therefore, I was wondering if this was mutter, because maybe it doesn't have to be so white. Maybe it's, um, uh, it's just softening it. It's not a malacha. If you learn it the other way, that the scarf was mutter, then you would say just the opposite. The shirt, you need it to be white. The scarf doesn't have to be white. That's what you would say. <laughs> okay. I'm Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda says, Hi, Kit, Kit Nisa. Rashi is explaining the way that it's us. Anyway. This uh, linen, linen shirt, Mishalfu Lididei Mikanya Shara. They would hang it on a reed, probably like a hanger um, that went from through the arms. You know, it was a stick, but they would, they would hang it on this reed. And you're allowed to take it off the reed on Shabbos, even though the reed is muksa, because it was not designated as any sort of tele. It's just a, you know, a piece of a stick. But Kanya Mimena is also, but you're not allowed to take the stick out of it. You can take it off the stick, you can't take the stick out of it. I mean, let's say it's stuck inside, you can't remove the stick from it because the stick is mukta. Amarava, dimkli kavyahu mutter. If the stick is a keli, even the keli that's used for weaving, which that's a keli shemalach de leiser, but because it's a keli, then it's a different sort of mukta and you're allowed to move it if you need the place, which means you need to get your <laughs> arms in the shirt. So you're allowed to move it. To um, to put this on, Amar of Chista, I kishted the yarka. This bundle of vegetables, green vegetables. If it's fit for animals, then it's not mukta to be loy aser. But if it's not fit for animals, then you can't move it. Just a bunch of weeds that you don't need. You don't need. Amar Rav Chia Barashi, Amar Rav. Rav Barashi is a student of Rav. Did we have that before? Before we had, he was a student of Zeira. Rav Barashi. Rav and Zeira were, were uh, contemporaries. So, Rav Barashi says the name of Rav. Hi, Talia de Bistra. Uh, this is like a string that's used to hang up meat. Shari Til Tuli. I think it was used for drying meat. You're allowed to move that string on Shabbos, but the kivri it's aser. But if it's used to hang fish, then it's aser. Now, I saw two interpretations. One is because the meat doesn't smell as bad as the fish. And so therefore I could use it for other things as well. This hook or the string. But the fish smells. Rashi doesn't learn like that. Rashi says that the fish could be eaten raw. Um, uh, the fish cannot be eaten raw. The meat could be eaten raw. The opposite of our culture. Um, so therefore, the fish that's hanging is, is aser, like a string. Amar of Katina. If someone stands on a bed, Rashi says it's a bed that a husband and wife sleep on, as if he's standing on the woman's stomach saying that he's going to start thinking about her um, if he's on a bed that's, uh, that's used by a couple. It's a beloved milsi, but it's actually not a problem. The Gemara is responding to Rav Katina. Um, Rav Chizda, um, I saw another shot of this. This is that the bed was, a, was made from a board. And if you would stand in the center of it, it could collapse. So it could be dangerous. So it's telling you, Kilo Ahmed, Bekreis Shalif, it's if you're standing on a person, which is also dangerous. It's telling you, don't stand in the middle of the bed. So you can tell the kids, <laughs> you know, mon monkeys jumping on the bed. Amar Rav Chista, Barbe Rav, Dezavin Yarka, Lisbon Aricha. 
there's a yeshiva bacher. That's an expression for someone without a lot of money. He's buying vegetables. You should buy long vegetables. This is the opposite of what they tell you in the, uh, in the market. The cucumbers, you buy the small ones and everything. Everything buy small. It says the yeshiva bacher should buy long ones. Why? Because aricha, Lisbon aricha, kisha ki kisha. I guess it means the width, the, the size of them is going to be the same size. But the length, that comes extra. I guess they would, a bundle of, let's say, five, six, whatever they were selling, a dozen. And so the length of them, that was extra. They would, that wasn't part of the price. The price was how many were there. Let's say this yeshiva bacher is buying wood, uh, sticks, reeds. This has been arika. Buy long ones. Tuna ki tuna. Because the weight, tuna maybe means the width. But the length is extra. If he doesn't have a lot of food, then don't eat vegetables. He doesn't have a lot of bread. Rift is bread. He shouldn't eat vegetables because it's going to make him hungry. It's going to, it's going to increase his appetite. You don't want to increase the appetite when you don't have more to eat. I never ate vegetables, not when I was poor, not, not when I was wealthy. But you see, Mishim Degar, when I was poor, I couldn't afford it because it would make me hungry and I didn't have more bread. But Tirusi, when I was wealthy, I didn't eat it. Damina, I thought to myself, Hechadal Yarkle, I'll of a cavalry. Instead of eating vegetables, I'll eat meat and fish. So he was wealthy, he was able to, um, he didn't have to eat the vegetables to fill himself up. Don't take the rice. <laughs> okay. Um, the pasta. The Amar of Chizda Barbi Ravdle Nafishale Rifta, a yeshiva bacha that doesn't have a lot of bread, they live to be sui. What this means is he shouldn't eat his bread in slices. It means a little now, a little later, because he won't actually feel full like that. He should eat it all at once. That way he'll have a, at least a satisfaction of fullness at one moment. You shouldn't slice the bread. My time at Leavid by in Yafa. I don't know if it means to give to others or for himself to eat. I think it means that he won't eat enough if he slices it. And he'll slice it very thin and then he won't get full. Should eat the whole thing. I guess it means he should eat it all at once. Amrav Chizda Nam Yikar Le'avi Betzi Yad Shadai Yad Bekula Mana Va'ashkhi Bekal Tzarki. Chizda says, before I would slice the bread, I would make sure that there's enough. I'd put my hand in the whole basket and see how much bread there is. If there's enough, then I would, then I would start slicing it. Amrav Chizda Ayman De Efsh Le'la Mechul Nama De Shari Vachal De Chiti Kav Mishum Bal Tashchas. If you're able to eat better bread, but to eat uh, barley. Barley bread. No, I'm sorry. If you're eating um, wheat bread, but you could have eaten barley bread, then you're wasting. You could have, you could have survived on less. You shouldn't have spent, spent that extra money to get the better bread. Of Papa, or of Papa says, Someone that drinks, that could drink beer, he doesn't need wine, could drink beer. Instead, he drinks wine. He's he's splurging, he's spending too much. What's, you have to do what's better for, for, your, for your body. So, Baltashkas of the body is more important. Is more of a of an issue than altashlus of the money. Bamrav Chizda Barbi Rav Leslie Mishcha Nimshi B'Maya Decharitzi. This is interesting. He doesn't have oil to put on his skin. He should take oil. He should, I'm sorry. He should take water from a pond. And because over there it has the um, what's it called the algae. It's the new source of oil. <laughs> so. Um, uh, this would be um, 
this because there's oil there that would uh, that could be beneficial for his skin. It's a good thing to invest in. Mar says. Um Barbe Barbe Rav to Zavanum to Lisbon Unka. He doesn't have money for meat, he should buy the neck. Because this be to loss of mini bistro. I guess he doesn't have money for a lot of meat. He only has money for one slice of meat. He's buying meat. He should buy that piece because over there you can get three types of meat out of the neck. Okay, what are the different types? Um, there's a fatty meat, there's a lean meat, and there's also the, there's a vein there that. Amrav Chiz, the Barbi Rav de Zavin Kitunisa, if he's buying a linen shirt, Lisbon Midnar Abba, should buy from Nahar Abba. It's the, um, the Costco or something. And the buy is telling you where to shop. The Nahavre called Klasiyami should wash it every 30 days. The Mafta lay Tracy Achishata, Vana Arva. The Mafti is. It's up to you. Does it mean that he's, he's guaranteeing that it's going to last for a year? Guaranteeing it's going to last for a year. My Kitanisa, what does it mean, a linen shirt? Kitana, come from upper class. Amrav Chizda Barbe Rav, Lay Laysev, Atsifsa Chadata, the Mechal Yamana. Don't sit on a new mat. It will ruin your clothing. I guess it's still moist. Maybe they made the reeds uh, wet when they wove a mat. It would sit on it. It would cause the clothing to go to get moldy or something because of the moisture of the... Amrav Chiz, the barber of Leil Lishader Mani Lishpiz Lechavri. The yeshiva bacher shouldn't send his clothing to the host. Shouldn't let the host wash his clothing. Um... It's not proper. She may see a stain on his clothing and she's going to despise him. It's probably referring to a, a mission. Rav Chizda says to his daughters, It should be modest in front of your husbands. Don't eat bread in front of your husbands. Because you can get carried away and you eat too much. And the husbands will look and they'll say, well, she's eating too much. And they'll um, give them a bad, uh, a bad image. Don't eat vegetables at night. That causes bad breath. Don't eat um, dates at night and don't drink beer at night because that causes gas. Um, Rav Chizda's daughters were married to Rami Bar Chama, Marut Bar Chama, and the one that was married to Rami Bar Chama married Rava. Uh, don't use the bathroom in the same place that your husbands use the bathroom. I'm sorry. In front of your husbands. Don't use the bathroom in front of your husbands. Because when they walk by that place, they're going to be disgusted. When someone knocks on the door, don't say who's there. You should say who's there. And this is very interesting. I don't know how the chassidim learn this Gemara. <laughs> you know, the mani, the, every, all the ooze are is. So don't say, um, don't say who's there within a masculine um, um, pronoun. Who, 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 uh, uh, say, uh, say who as if in a feminine, because you shouldn't be accustomed to speak with men. So you should, your natural um, uh, phrase should be who in, in a feminine, in a feminine uh, question. Knock it. He took a pearl in one hand and he took a clot of dirt in the other. The pearl he showed them, but the clot of dirt he didn't show them. Adam it started until they were very curious about the and then he showed it to them. The Rashi says 
that he was telling them that when the women are together with their husbands, um, they should show their breasts, but not their uh, lower, uh, lower area, until the husbands desire them, and then, uh, then they should show it. Okay, now it says, that you're not supposed to soak this vetch. We said that that was an issue of, of cleaning off the, um, the, the, the leaves. Mastis and like Tana, the Mishnah doesn't fit with the following author, the following Tana. The Tanya of Blessed Binyakavai, may mashkich and bekvar kalikr. He says, oh, there's missing of a chulu. So say, etc. It says that you're, that you shouldn't put it in. That you can put it into a strainer. And according to Rabbi Lozer Ben Yaakov, you're not supposed to put it into a strainer. Okay, let's leave it over here.